Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, thumbs up. <coughs> well, today we're going to talk a little bit about what the city of Finley is doing to meet the requirements Lynette was talking about. So what we have is a small city answer to stormwater pollution reduction. That MS4 that we're talking about, it is a municipal separate storm sewer system and Finley is classified as a phase two for that. Basically what it means is that we have six minimum control measures we have and we have to reduce pollution in our stormwater to the maximum extent feasible. At this time, we don't have to worry about numeric limits on this, but we're trying to get rid of as much pollution as feasible or possible. Uh, this is because all of that stormwater that ends up in those 3,000 some odd catch basins that the city has directly discharges to the river. There is no treatment for those. Our stormwater management plan is a plan that was designed to address those six minimum control measures. It basically outlines the requirements for each and the tasks that the city is doing to uh, meet those requirements. We've seen these before, public education outreach, public involvement, illicit discharge, construction, post-construction, pollution prevention, and good housekeeping. You'll notice that the first two, they're based on getting citizens involved. They both say public for a reason. We're looking for the residences to become aware of what they're doing, and if they see anything that's going on that may be uh, adding to that pollution, to take a proactive role in solving that. Number three is illicit discharges. Basically that talks about how as you're going into the river, anything that's not stormwater should not be going into the river. If it's not treated, it needs to be going to where uh, a proper place for disposal is, be that the sanitary system or the landfill. Number four and five, they address construction and post-construction. We're talking about all that sediment. You've seen some of those pictures. We're not talking about electric in the river. As mentioned, the nutrients, it uh, kills habitat, changes some of the temperatures in the river. Very bad for aquatic life. Number six is the good housekeeping. Basically, this focuses on all of the municipal operations. It's a practice what you preach. If we're asking the citizens to get involved and to say, be aware of what you're doing, the city, with all of its buildings, needs to be aware of what it's doing and not adding to that pollution as well. The first one, some of the requirements that are put on us uh, to help meet these goals are to prepare and distribute materials, pamphlets, news ads, etc., on pollutants and stormwater runoff, and to promote good stormwater management by educating on what you can do to help. Some of you guys who may have gotten utility bills with little flyers in it recently, about twice a year, we put out just a little, it's like a bookmark size flyer. It says, uh, you know, things that you can do to help. Uh, talks about current forums like today so you can become involved. Some of the things we're doing to meet those goals are we formed a stormwater advisory committee, we call it SWAC, meets several times a year, focuses on programs and projects to reduce pollutants. We're trying to update the city website, finleyohio.com, to add more stormwater links. We also try to keep public and elected officials up to date on what is going on with this uh, program. For our public involvement and participation requirements, we're trying to involve public and local interest groups, and we're also trying to include all community groups. Can't start too young, can't be too old to help reduce pollution. Some of the current tasks that are happening around the city include cleanup days. Uh, we have environmental waste collection. I believe on your uh, table you have a flyer for the medicine collection event that's coming on. We work with a lot of other groups, including Solid Waste District and the Watershed Partnership to um, promote these events, including stream cleaning with volunteer efforts. The placard project, as you guys see the catch basins around town, as you're driving by, you don't crash, but look over to the gutter, you'll see little plastic circles on all the catch basins. Those were put on through uh, Randy's group, as well as volunteer efforts. They say, no dumping, drains to river. It's basically an awareness campaign. Wherever you see one of those stickers, anything that goes down into that drain does not get treated. Uh, once again, the SWAC public are always welcome to attend. They go through a public meeting no notice cycle, so they'll be in the paper. You'll see the notice in the municipal building when the next meeting is, when it comes up. 
you know, voice your concerns, voice any complaints you may have. We also have tours. We have the ability of touring different locations around the city where we put in post-construction uh, practices, different best management practices, as well as dealing with the Hancock Leadership Tour, which is tomorrow, where we take a busload of interested uh, people around the city and show them different, different sites. The illicit discharge detection and elimination requirements. We are uh, required to create a map showing the location of the entire MS4 system. As pointed out, this isn't just catch basins, this isn't just pipes, it's the entire system. We need to locate all non-stormwater entrance points into the system and eliminate them. It's a little trickier than it sounds. Uh, we don't even know where all the pipes go into the river at this time. So one of the things the city is doing is getting out there, doing the legwork, walking the river. If you see some surveyors out there, uh, you know, don't run up to them and ask, what are you doing? We're just looking for outfall points. Basically, once we find all the outfall points, we start testing them to make sure that the only thing coming out is stormwater. We're also developing and modifying ordinances to address illicit discharge. It's all very fine and well to find someone dumping in there, but we need to have something that says you need to stop dumping, and that's where the ordinances come into play. Our current task is we are updating the GIS map layer to show the system locations. Once we locate them, we're trying to integrate them into a computer system so that we can interact with it and quickly find locations of all the storm sewers. Uh, we're locating the discharge areas to eliminate them and modifying the ordinances to create enforcement mechanisms. For the construction site runoff control, uh, we're creating guidelines through best management practices to reduce pollution and stormwater runoff from land disturbance activities. Uh, water quality plan, inf inspection, and enforcement are also required. Basically, you'll be hearing best management practices a lot coming up. It's one of the, the key components to this is to do not only structural, but just everyday common sense items as a best management practice to reduce it. Current tasks to help uh, meet that requirement, we're creating a stormwater design manual, a manual of management practices. We also need to do inspection practices and inspection checklists to ensure compliance. The post-construction stormwater management requirements, very similar to construction. It's basically uh, using best management practices to support long-term water quality improvements. So that says that once the contractor's done with the site, don't just walk off the site and forget about it. We've got to make sure that get, what gets put in to maintain the water quality is upkept. What we're doing to meet that is inspections and checklists for long-term water quality improvements, maintenance such as catch basin cleaning, culvert channel repair. As Randy mentioned, it takes three years to cycle through all of our catch basins to clean them out. So it's not like we're coming by every month to clean your catch basin. We want to keep those as clean as possible so that when the maintenance happens, um, it's not that bad. We're also doing maintenance on city installed water quality structures. We've been putting in post-construction uh, structural pollution prevention items on a lot of the projects that have come about. We've got one up on Melrose. There's one going in on Crystal. There's a lot of stormwater separators that are taking out oil and floatables in the pollution or in the stormwater to reduce pollution. <coughs> Our next one is pollution prevention and good housekeeping. Basically, the city is trying to prevent and reduce stormwater pollution through municipal operations, it includes staff training, an operation and maintenance program, and EPA municipal facility inspections. We haven't had any uh, inspections yet. I hope this isn't a trigger to start one. <laughs> but what we're trying to do to meet this is create an operational plan. We want to have items such as fleet management, de-icing, herbicide, pesticide use, etc. sort of under control on the municipal side to make sure that the staff that's applying these things or doing fleet management knows what they're doing and knows how to do it in the best way possible to reduce pollution in stormwater. We're also looking at departmental audits to locate and reduce stormwater pollutant sources. Hopefully either this year or early next year we're going to try to get a third party in to check out all our municipal inspections, just a fresh eye on our sites to see if there's any way to improve what we're doing. We're also working through employee training.
in summary, uh, our MS4 requirements are tied to that National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit. You'll hear MPDES a lot. It's a five-year cycle, and it is required by EPA to get our discharge permit approved. Our cycle ends in 2014, so we're implementing these things over the next several years. We've had, uh, I believe, since 2009 to get started on this, and we're slowly but surely uh, changing things for the better. It requires improvements in pollution reduction in all six minimum control categories. There is an annual report to EPA showing our progress. And our goal is to take a minimum but effective approach, meaning or exceeding all EPA requirements. And the reason we say that is, is because this is an unfunded mandate, so all of these uh, programs and things that we come up with with the city need to be funded locally. Uh, to do this, we need community help, as is point one and two public. So the stormwater pollution isn't typically a single large source of pollution. I know you've seen some pretty impressive pictures of uh, single instances where wax is flowing into streams or, you know, antifreeze from our catch basins. But one of the, the large issues are many small sources that add up as they combine and end up in the water. That first flush is basically every time it rains, the first little bit of water that uh, goes across the surface, especially parking lots and impervious surfaces, it picks up all the pollutants that have been accumulating since that last rain and dumps them all at once into the river. That isn't just one thing, it's a whole bunch of little things that add up. So if your car is dripping oil, you know, oh, what about it? It's one drip of oil, right? Well, if your car is dripping oil from three solid weeks uh, before it rains, all that oil that you dripped over the last three weeks is now pushed into the river all at once. So there are a lot of things that you can ask yourself, what can I do to help with this? Some of those things are simply, don't dump anything down a storm drain or catch basin. Um, if you have any doubt whatsoever where it goes, don't dump it down there. That includes oil, paint, soap, animal waste, sewage, organics, uh, such as grass clippings, leaves, things like that. We also want the proper application of pesticides and fertilizers. And but again, you think, okay, so there's a couple fertilizer pellets on my lawn. Well, 14,000 households of a couple fertilizer pellets adds up during that first rain. Uh, make sure you follow package directions, no rain forecasted, just simple common sense things. It even comes down to small things like washing your car and your grass instead of the driveway. Those soaps may say they're all right for the environment. <coughs> they may biodegrade over time, but you don't really want to spray those directly into the river. If you wouldn't pour it into the river, don't pour it somewhere where it'll get into a catch piece. Um, even some of the things like reporting people seen dumping. So you know your neighbor changes his oil every day and you see him, or not every day, uh, there's a good one though. Uh, <laughs> every time your neighbor changes his oil, he walks out to the curb and you see him pour it down a catch basin. Maybe just, you know, lightly go over and, and, and explain where that's going and what harm it could do. Just little things that can change one step at a time. Uh, how many out there are business owners or affiliated with a business here in town? Do we have anyone? All right, we got one or two, okay. No participation, I see. Uh, these business owners, there's a couple of things you can do uh, basically around your site to help out. See some bare areas, you know, where there's no grass growing? Throw a little bit of seed on there, keep some of that sediment down. If you have any vehicles with your business, fleet management, oil drips, car washes, everything like that. Simple as covering dumpsters. If you have drain holes in the bottom of your dumpsters, and they're full and it rains, all that water's going into your dumpster, collecting all those pollutants and draining out of the bottom of your dumpster into a catch basin. Simple things like that, and soap, chemical, wash water, <coughs> washing your building, uh, you're stripping your floors, don't pour it down on the catch basin. 